From the Gates Gymnasium inside the White Camp Center in Mishawaka, Bethel Pilots basketball is on the air tonight. The Pilots take on the number six ranked Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats. And how you doing, everybody? Alongside Mishawaka's great Craig Heatherly, it's Chuck Freeby. Great to have you with us for an evening of Bethel Pilot basketball on TV 46. This Indiana Wesleyan team comes in with a terrific pedigree. They've got a national championship coach in Greg Conigal, and they have something the Pilots don't have, and that's a lot of size. And boy, do they have size, and it comes from a freshman and a super senior in Buchanan and Maxwell, averaging close to 30 points a game, 12 rebounds a game. For those Bethel Pilots, it's going to be a war in the paint this afternoon. Which means the Pilots have to get some great play out of their veteran players today. It doesn't hurt to have that young man yeah. The candidate for Crossroads League Player of the Year, Drew Lutz. You're exactly right. I mean, Lutz and Ertz have had a fantastic season thus far. Been very consistent, but it's going to be the supporting cast that's going to need to step up in a game like today. So Coach Draven's going to be telling his guys, be the best version of yourself today. You know what they have been when they play here at the White Camp Center. Bethel is 10-1 and one in this arena this year. Why does home court make such a difference in this very competitive league? You're exactly right. You've got to take care of home. In this league, there's great traditions, great programs, and fantastic fan bases. And you've got to, you've got to perform well at home because it's so tough to win on the road. I know they're watching in Laporte. A couple of Slicer alums going head-to-head -to -head tonight. Greg Tonigo against Steve Draven. It's Indiana Wesleyan at Bethel, and we've got the keys to win coming up. You're watching Bethel Pilots basketball on TV 46. Welcome back inside the Gates Gymnasium at the White Camp Center as we get you ready for Indiana Wesleyan and Bethel this evening. Time now to look at our keys to win, and let's start with the Wildcats of Indiana Wesleyan who come in here with the reigning Crossroads Player of the Year, the NAIA All-American Seth Maxwell, the seven-foot grad student, averaging just a shade under 16 points a game with six rebounds a game. He has 63 block shots, fourth in the nation, which is one reason why he is the reigning Crossroads Defensive Player of the Year for the last three seasons. And then he had Get some help from Javon Buchanan, the 6'7 freshman forward out of Lafayette, Indiana, averaging 13 points and four and a half rebounds a game. He hurt the Pilots with 14 the first time these two teams played. The keys for the veteran Greg Conigal and his Wildcats. Yeah, in a game like tonight, it's going to be critical for the Wildcats to stay in front of the basketball. As coaches like to say, guard your yard and own your matchup. The next key to the game is going to be establish the post. And I'd do the same thing if I was Coach Donegal. I'd play inside, inside out with Buchanan and Maxwell. And then this third key to the game is going to be play a consistent 40 minutes. A sign of a great player and a great team is consistency. He's going to be looking for that this afternoon. Meanwhile, Bethel relies on old reliable himself. And that's Drew Watts, the 6'1 senior guard. Could be the Crossroads Player of the Year this year. He is averaging 22 and a half points, five rebounds a game. He's also getting six assists a game. He has done it all in his first season coming back to the area from Incarnate Word University. Doesn't have to do it alone, though. Inside, Nathan Ertz is going to be responsible for helping out defensively and also supplying some offense. The 6'6 senior averaging 15 points and six rebounds a game. He can light it up from three-point range, had 18 on Wednesday in the win over Marion. The keys to win for Steve Draven to the Pilots. He's going to be talking to his players about playing with confidence this afternoon. They've been elite at home this season, and let's continue that by playing with confidence. Control Maxwell, the big fella inside. Want to make them force tough catches and make it challenging for them all night. And then the third key is going to be apply pressure. Get out there on the perimeter. Make those entry passes into the post difficult. And those are the keys of the game for Coach Draven. Good crowd filing into the White Camp Center. They want to see if the Pilots can pull off the upset against one of the league leaders in the Crossroads League. Indiana Wesleyan and Bethel is coming up. You're watching Bethel Pilots basketball on TV 46.
just about ready to go from the White Camp Center as we get you ready for Indiana Wesleyan and Bethel. Time now to give you the starting lineups. You're looking at the Wildcats of Indiana Wesleyan, 17 and 7 on the year, but tied with Grace for the lead in the Crossroads League. They'll line up like this. Noah Smith, the redshirt senior guard, averages nine and a half points a game. Griffin Cleaver is a 6'3 sophomore at 13 points a game. Nolan Mater. Redshirt sophomore at six points per game. Javon Buchanan, the 6'7 freshman, right around 13 points a game. And then you've got Seth Maxwell, the big man in the middle, seven foot grad student, averaging 16 points a game. And you see Maxwell giving all the high tens to everybody else on the team. Before they turn out the lights, let's look at the Steve Draven Bethel pilot lineup today. And they'll, of course, lead off with Drew Lutz, the 6'1 senior guard who's averaging 22 points a game. Nathan Ertz is a 6'5 senior out of Alparaiso, Indiana. He averages 15 points a game. Tongi Touze, the sophomore from France, stands 6'5. He's right around 11 points a game. Brandon Hunt, a forward, but with a very velvety outside touch, hails from Williamston, Michigan. And the 6'9 sophomore right around nine points a game. And then Deacon Heath has been moved into the starting lineup the last couple of games. He's a six-foot grad student, and he's averaging three points a game. This the 120th meeting between Indiana Wesleyan and Bethel, a series that dates back to 1968. Pilots lead the overall series, but they do not want to think about what happened in Marion, Indiana on December 10th because Indiana Wesleyan dropped the hammer on Bethel and won that one by a count of 86 to 52. Working the game today, Corey DeGroote, Bernard Weatherly shown there, and Mark Kenyon. And this one, Mr. Heavily, shapes up to be a pretty good Crossroads League contest. Anytime these two teams get together, and really anybody in the Crossroads League get together, you're bound to see spectacular players, outstanding coaching, and typically a really good atmosphere. And, uh, that's exactly what I believe we're going to see here this afternoon, Chuck. I know we're prejudiced in our area, but I really believe this is the best conference in NAIA basketball, and it shows year in and year out. Yeah, they compete on a national level year in and year out. Lots and lots of national championships coming out of this uh, out of this league, especially in the last 20 years. Indiana Wesleyan wins the opening tip. They kick it outside to Noah Smith, and he drains the three-pointer. Smith, only a 32% three-point shooter, really needed that. He had only hit two of his last 17 from outside the arc. Brandon Hunt with the basketball for Bethel in the blue today. Touze, the guard out of France. Step back jumper is off the mark, and the rebound tipped out to Nolan Mater. Indiana Wesleyan 17 and 7 overall. One of their key players, Spencer Piercefield, out with an injury, and that caused the Wildcats to go into a bit of a tailspin in the month of January where they lost three straight. Greg Tonical hopes that they have fixed things, but that pass deflected away by Tuesday with eight on the shot clock. Yeah, that's exactly what Coach Draven wanted to see there when the ball's out on the perimeter and they're trying to get it inside to the big fella pressuring the ball, making those passes difficult. Nice cut that time by Cleaver, and he lays it up with a reverse and puts it in. Griffin Cleaver, a sophomore out of Lee's Summit, Missouri, gives Indiana Wesleyan a 5-0 lead. Here's Ertz coming down the lane. Oh. He saw lots of real estate there, Chuck. And you'll get another look on the pilot replay. A little bit more than the bucket of the bump right here as Ertz went in with violence on his mind. <laughs> I don't know if Coach Tonical is gonna be really happy with that help side defense by Maxwell, but heck of a drive down the lane there with the finish. Still only counts for two. Pilots trail by three. <laughs> They work the ball around to Noah Smith, young man out of Hamilton Southeastern High School around Indianapolis. 
Here's the big fella Maxwell. Hunt draws the defensive assignment. And Lutz came over and fouled him as he tried to double team. Yeah, anytime you, when, when you get a, an opposing player of that size out on the perimeter driving the basketball, they're typically uncomfortable, not as skilled as a guard. So you can see their Lutz coming over there trying to steal the basketball. Cleaver misfires in the rebound of Nathan Ertz. Pilots in transition. They love to get up and wow. down the floor. Wow. What a luxury to have a big fellow that can rebound it on one side of the floor and take it all the way to the rack. I know Greg Tonigal not enamored with the Wesleyan defense there, but a fine play by Ertz. Here's Maxwell trying to post up on Brandon Hunt. And Maxwell with the right hand spins out on him. Ertz is the other rebound. Pilots with a chance to take the lead. Here's Lutz. Yeah, this is the this is the pace that Coach Draven wants to play early in possessions. Lutz from three. Bring it up. <laughs> He did eight of those against Holy Cross this year. He's a 40% three-point shooter, and a 7-0 Bethel run gives the Pilots the lead. It's exactly the kind of start you want to see from your, your leader. Javon Buchanan with the right hand was fouled on the way up, but let's take another look at the three by Lutz at the other end on the Pilot replay. Yeah, one of the things that Bethel does a nice job of is the players move really well without the basketball, and you saw it right there with Lutz coming from the left corner all the way up to the top of the key off the move and sticking that jump shot. Here's Buchanan at the foul line. The freshman out of Lafayette, Jeff, hits the first. He's a 71% free throw shooter. He was an Indiana All-Star last year for Mark Barnheiser and the Broncos. Averaging 13 points a game. One out of two at the strike for Smith with a one-hand rebound. Smith down low to Maxwell. That was well done. Maxwell, the seven-foot grad student, got behind the defense. And once he gets back there and has position, he's unstoppable. Yeah, came off of an offensive rebound there, which created some mismatches. He had Lutz down there. and. He wasn't trying to pick up his second, his second foul and just let that play happen. Tuze from the wing. Tanji Tuze. Knocks it down and the pilot's back in front. Yeah, one of the more challenging shots in basketball is off the dribble in that mid-range area. He's now taken two of them and made one. And clearly, if he's taking it that much this early, he's comfortable with that shot. Cleaver for three, very comfortable. Yeah, what you saw there was the dribble created some pressure on the defense, attack in the middle of the floor and kicked it out for an open three. Lutz. Brandon Hunt thought about taking the three. Instead, he comes in and floats up a runner that's off the mark. And here comes Indiana Wesley and Cleaver going strong to the baseline. Now the three on the way, it's off the mark. Battle for the loose ball, and it's gonna go to whom? Little, looks like it'll be Indiana Wesleyan basketball when we come back. Wildcats and the Pilots getting up and down the floor in the early going. Nathan Ertz asserting his presence with authority. It's 11-9 Wildcats on 46. Chuck and Craig back in Mishawaka for this critical Crossroads League game. Critical for a number of reasons. From Bethel's standpoint, they're trying to make sure they stay in the top four because those top four get home court for tournament games. In the case of Indiana Wesleyan, they've got to stay right there with Grace in the chase for the lead of the conference. Yeah, typically this league, their top four slots will have automatic bids if you don't win the tournament to the national tournament because that's how strong this league is. So yes, I mean, both teams are playing to be the, the number one team there at the end, but Wesleyan obviously with number two, this game can move them up there with number one and uh, huge game for both sides. Ask Steve Draven how he felt about his position in the league. He goes, well, obviously we'd like to be on top. He goes, but considering everything, we're we're pretty happy with being at the number four slot right now. Now we have to make sure we protect that and maybe even get into a position where they can be third. 
Meanwhile, out of the timeout, Tim Adetokasi comes in and hits the bucket off the bench. The 6'6 junior out of Essex, London, England. And if you're watching this game at home, anytime there's a timeout, watch the next play. Both these coaches are fantastic in the huddles, drawing things up. Brandon Hunt's three off the mark. Tuse couldn't hit the rebound tip. And here comes Griffin Cleaver throwing it away. He was trying to throw it to Luke Stevens, the young man out of Fairfield, and Stevens has had knee problems throughout his career, and it looks like his knee flared up on him again right there. If you take a look at that Bethel pilot bench, so Coach Mark Polsgrove, the lead assistant to Steve Draven. Four-point Wildcat lead. Lutz trying to work on the big fella out of Takasi. Drove it past him, and then Maxwell was back there. Ertz going to the baseline. Three on the way is off by Al Pachulis, and here comes Indiana Wesleyan the other way. Stevens down low to Maxwell. He's backing his man in. The baseline jumper goes awry, but he collects the loose change. Griffin Cleaver handles the ball up top. Shot clock at 10. You hear the Wesleyan fans counting down for Cleaver to fire the three and hit. If you can hit a step back like that, you're going to cause some problems. Yeah, typically when that shot clock's running down, you need somebody to step up and make an outstanding individual effort, and that's exactly what happened. Cleaver dove for the loose ball, but he was on the baseline. And Indiana Wesleyan will go to its bench. Buchanan and Smith come back in, and we get the first appearance of Alex Stauffer, the young man out of Northridge High School. Tuze looks to inbound. Here's Lutz over in the corner. He went outside to Ertz for three. Wow. Eighth wow. off to a big start with seven. Well, if you look at the matchup there on Lutz, they've got the big fella, uh, 15 there from Iwu, matched up with them, trying to just probably bother him with his length. Lutz was able to drive there and kick it to the open Ertz. There's Smith down low. Lutz guards him. Kicked outside to Adetokasi for three. And Tim Adetokasi, who had 13 on Wednesday night against Spring Arbor, picks up right where he left off. He's got five, but he reached into the cookie jar there and Lutz gets the foul called against him. But take another look at the big fellow from Iwu, Tim Adetokasi, stepping up in the corner. Yeah, and it all began with the dribble penetration to the middle of the floor, caused the defense to turn their eyes on the ball. Open shot in the corner, feet set, knocked it down. Bethel down seven here. Three, uh, Lutz inside the arc that time for two. And Lutz has five. Just another play there with Lutz moving, up, moving off of the basketball. Taking another tough shot in the middle of the floor. Buchanan, he was on the line, misses the shot, the rebound to Tuze. Tuze in transition. Trent Edwards in the game now, Northwood. Tuze for three, that's offline, and the rebound to Stauffer. And a new play called out from the Wildcat bench. Smith. Gets a screen from Stauffer, but couldn't do much with it. Now he's backing Edwards down, shoots over him. That's a wild shot. Good defense that time by Edwards. And we've got a whistle and some contact because Tuze got into it with Smith. They'll call the foul. Yeah, the difference in that last play and the three in the corner that we just saw, when there was dribble penetration, Bethel's defense, they stayed attached to their guy and made that ball handler make an individual play in the middle of the floor, and he missed it. Buchanan tried to back his man down. Ertz held his ground, but Buchanan gets the rebound home. Javon Buchanan 
The 6'7 freshman now has three. Iwu up by seven, and Lutz. Did he get tripped up there? Apparently he did. It's going to be called on Noah Smith, his first. Now I can promise you, Chuck, there's not very many freshmen at this level that look like Buchanan. Six foot seven. I think Coach Tonegal said the sky's the limit for this young man. And that's one reason why Coach Tonegal is willing to give him some freedom offensively. Inside, foul called on Stauffer, and it'll send Al Petulus to the foul line where he's an 84% free throw shooter. You'll get another look here on the pilot replay. You talked about inbound play execution earlier, and here's some from Bethel. Yeah, just another outstanding cut off of the basketball by the pilot team. Petulous, young man who grew up in London but came to America, played in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where he was all state last year, and he hits the first. As Stauffer comes out of the lineup for Indiana Wesleyan. Petulous said he came to Bethel because he wanted to see his faith grow. Indiana Wesleyan going back to the bench. Kyle Sanders, young man out of Western High School in Kokomo comes in. Griffin Cleaver checks out. Petulous averaging six and a half points, five and a half rebounds coming off the bench this year for Bethel, and he hits them both. Yeah, and on the flip side, Bethel's got one and similar size there to, uh, to Buchanan. And for a freshman, he averaging five rebounds a game shows you why he's on the floor. Smith up top. There's Maxwell on the wing, guarded by Brandon Hunt. Double team was coming, but Hunt got too much of him. Yeah, that's now the second time when Maxwell's caught the ball out on the floor. And when he's put the ball on the when he's put the ball on the deck, you see that Bethel Pilot team coming over, rallying to the basketball. Four fouls on each side so far in the first half. Smith has been directing traffic well, and he goes down low to Maxwell here. But the double team came and forced the ball outside to Buchanan. Couldn't hit the three. Good rebound by wow. Petulus. He really got up there for that one. Edwards needs some help, and there's Lutz. Hunt from the foul line. Too strong, Maxwell, that'll be the easiest rebound he ever gets. <laughs> Brown wound up right in his lap. Again, lots of movement there in the half court for the pilot basketball team. Basketball's moving from one side to the other. Smith got a great screen from Maxwell and lays it up and in. I mean, Maxwell just absolutely absorbed the Bethel player into that screen. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a conversation there in the next time out. Here's Hunt for three. And if you leave Brandon Hunt open, he will do that. He is a 38% three-point shooter this year. And all of a sudden, the pilot's back within four. It shows you how this game of basketball has really evolved over the years. You saw the first play of the game, one of Bethel's forwards, drive it down the lane and, and dunk it. And then now you see them opening up the, the outside with the threes. Buchanan with good body control, but he couldn't finish. Lutz comes the other way with the hesitation. Oh, and he leads them long to right. <laughs> timeout called by Bethel. It's a full timeout. No, it's a 30. It's a 30-second timeout. And we'll give you another look at the last move by Lutz here on the pilot replay. It all began with the pace up the floor. You see Lutz pushing the, pushing the ball up the floor and then stops on a dime. Not the brakes work well. <laughs> no and, need to go to Midas. And, let, and let's note that's over an individual that's six foot seven with a greater wingspan than that. Wow. Six foot seven when he slid all the way out of the way doesn't make as much difference. <laughs> Very entertaining basketball game for the first 10 minutes. Indiana Wesleyan leading it 23 21. A reminder coming up at halftime, we'll speak with Bethel Athletic Director Tony Natale about all the programs going on here at Bethel and what he's trying to do with the athletic culture. And this young man, Steve Draven, is a big part of what Tony is trying to do in the athletic culture here at Bethel. Yeah, Coach Coach Draven truly believes in coaching the person before the player. And it's, it's clear, by the way, these guys play so well together. And you saw another phenomenal play here out of a timeout by the pilot defense. 
So the steal by Bethel, they've got the chance to tie or regain the lead. Lutz kicks it down for the layup to Petulus. And we're tied at 23. Maxwell up top. Smith in the corner. Cleaver with the shake and bake. Back to Smith, 10 on the shot clock. Three on the way and buried by Kyle Sanders. The 6-1 sophomore had only played in 14 games this year. He hadn't scored since the calendar hit January 1, but that has changed now. And the ball knocked away and out of bounds, and it'll be Indiana Wesleyan ball as Stauffer comes back in for Edward or Sanders, who has a big smile on his face as he comes to the Wildcat bench. Yeah, I think one thing to, to absolutely focus on here is Bethel's defense on the big fellow Maxwell inside. They're making it challenging for him to get ca easy catches inside by being physical with them. Double team. Smith gets loose inside. Now Cleaver, head and shoulder fake, couldn't hit the shot, but Smith, a huge offensive rebound, and he lays it in. Wasn't the best box off by the Pilots that time. Yeah, now that's the second offensive rebound that we've seen to lead to points for the Wildcats. Look at bodies hitting the floor here, and the ball winds up in the hands of Lutz, but he couldn't hit the three. This place would have gone nuts had he hit that one. Cleaver, down low to Maxwell. Big fella swatted away by Hunt. Here comes Lutz. Behind the back, lost the handle. And a whistle and a charge on Drew Lutz. The second on the Bethel guard. And he's a bit incredulous at the call. We'll get another look at here at the pilot replay. Here he is again, pushing the pace. When you've got three bodies back there, Chuck, I don't know if I agree with the call necessarily. I can tell you I disagree with the call. <laughs> but great job there by the Wildcats getting back, getting back, getting bodies in front of the basketball. I mean, a heads up play of selling the call by Indiana Wesleyan, but mm, nah, that wouldn't charge. Cats by five. Smith inside. He gets fouled. Looks like it'll be on Petulus. That's the first on Big Al. Yeah, curious to see Coach Draven's adjustment there on Smith. He's he's living in the lane right now off the bounce, creating some problem for Bethel's defense. Um, curious to see if they make him maybe make some shots from the outside or at least take some shots from the outside. He is a 76% foul shooter on the year. This is a young man that came back from a torn ACL that he suffered last year and missed all of last year. But Greg Tonical told me yesterday, and we're seeing it today, great court vision and he knows angles. And you've been able to see that with the way that he has run this attack, finding the open man. Yeah, just look at him. He's physically strong, able to kind of create some angles off the dribble and plays off two feet inside. He doesn't play out of control. Eight points now for Smith. Wesleyan back up by six with a 6-0 run. Edwards goes to his left. Kicks it back outside. Eric's for three. That's off of the rebound to Smith. Edwards guarding Smith. See if they go to Maxwell. Tonigal wants him to change which side he's on. Meanwhile, Cleaver with the spinorama puts the offensive rebound in. Griffin Cleaver now with 10. And Bethel has given up way too many offensive rebounds right now. Yeah, you're exactly right. But and most importantly, they've led to baskets. Ertz throws it away. The steal by Mater. Here comes Smith all the way to the hole. Couldn't hit. Tuesday with the rebound. Yeah, we'll see what the pilot offense looks like here with outlets on the floor. You have to wonder where the points come from. Tuesday will take over as the point guard, but somebody's got to do some scoring. And the passes keep getting tipped away. 
and tip us right in to a media timeout with 6.50 to go here in the first half. Indiana Wesleyan in the midst of an 8-0 run takes a 31-23 lead. You're watching Bethel Pilot Basketball on TV 46. Indiana Wesleyan leads it. 6.50 to go first half, 31-23. Reminder, high school basketball makes a return to TV 46 Friday night. Everybody knows about Marcus Burton going to Notre Dame from Penn, but there are a lot of players on both South Bend, Washington, and Penn that you could see in the Crossroads League in the future, and it should be a great matchup. Washington, number six in 3A, Penn, number two in 4A. We'll have it for you on the live stream Friday night at 7.30 and on TV 46 Friday night at 11, Saturday morning at 9. We've seen both teams once this year. I'm sure you look at that talent and say, some of it would fit in here nicely. You're exactly right. And just like we've got two fantastic coaches here at the college level, both of those programs have outstanding coaches that pour into their kids. And it's no surprise why they're both ranked in the top 10 because they put in the work. And boy, are those kids talented. Drew Lutz back on the floor with 6.47 to go despite the two fouls. Steve Draven didn't want to take any more chances. But Lutz forced into a bad shot that time by Ada Takasi. The length of Ada Takasi has been given Lutz yeah. bits out there this afternoon. Yeah. Mater misses the scoop layup and the rebound to Deacon Heath. Tuesday working around traffic. Here's Brandon Hunt, the lob down low, stolen away by Luke Stevens. The Fairfield alum races up the floor for Indiana Wesleyan. Cleaver for three. You cannot leave him open. He will light you up, Absolutely. and Steve Draven needs another timeout with 6.07 to go in the first half. Cleaver had a career-high 31 against Spring Arbor on Wednesday night. He has not taken his foot off the gas. Yeah, and it, it all started on the other end. A turnover led to a transition break, which leads to mismatches in transition. Don't know who has who. You've got to get the ball stopped. But they left him open there on the right wing. And as you mentioned, Chuck, not a guy, especially in this game, you want to leave open. I know you have a lot of respect for this guy in the coaching circle right now. Greg Conigle, 495 career wins, three-time NAIA national champion, but sporting a different look these days. <laughs> he is. I didn't even recognize him. I asked him if he was doing some modeling on the side, but... Uh, no, he looks great. He looks great. Married his wife, Amy, and he has six kids. He's a 1998 graduate of LaPorte High School that went on to a fine career at Valparaiso University. I teased him yesterday. I said, if this game goes overtime, instead of the two teams playing, it'll just be you and Coach Draven <laughs> in a free throw shooting contest. He says, I will concede the free throw shooting to Steve, who was something of a 90% foul shooter during his high school days at LaPorte. Yeah, what a competitive family that Draven, that Draven crew is. I don't know if they'd... I think there would be an argument to see who was the best shooter in that family. I'm sure Kristen would want her voice <laughs> heard and her shot seen. Nathan Ertz working to try to back down Stauffer, and the bank is open on a Saturday in the Princess City as Ertz now has nine to lead the Pilots. Yeah, we've seen a, a drive to the basket, a jump shot, and then now a jump hook in the post. Well-rounded game on the offensive end for him. Out to Kytus, outside. Here's Luke Stevens trying to back down Deacon Heath. Cleaver nearly pumped it from the logo. Now loses the handle. Ball loose, and the Pilots have it in transition. Tuesday for two. First to the floor, Chuck. Typically wins 90% of the time, and you saw exactly that right there. And now Indiana Wesleyan wants a timeout as we'll take another look on the pilot replay at exactly what Craig Heatherly was talking about. And you'll see 
Who did get first to the floor here? Yep, indeed it was the Pirates. Well, you saw three players running at the ball, and I don't know if any one of them wanted to dive on the floor. And both, and two of them decided, let's do it, and it worked out for the Pilots. But let's face it, those kind of floor burns, that's part of the legacy of Bethel basketball, whether you go back to the days of Rico Swanson, and of course, they used to have the etometer here for Michael Edison, who's now the head coach at LaVille High School, the number of floor burns that he would get during a game. The, the best way I could describe watching Bethel Pilot basketball growing up was their players lost themselves in the game. They just played like their hair was on fire. Uh, but that's a great description. They were so passionate about the game of basketball that for that 40 minutes, there was nothing else in their world. Yeah, you talk about winning the game. They focused on, Coach, Coach Lightfoot, they focused on winning the small moments in the game. And, uh, and that was very evident and clear. We see, we see the banners here hanging tonight of the fruits of the labor. Pilots climb back within seven with five minutes to go first half. Mater, now Smith. Smith had Heath backing up. Now Smith open for three. You asked if he could hit it, he can. Yeah, I think coming into the game, he's maybe two of his last 17. I think as a, as a coach, for the pilots, you want to live with that shot versus him getting into the paint and making plays for others. Well, he's hit two now. Here's Hunt for three. He's hit two as well. <laughs> three, four, five. Just Brandon feels like a heavyweight five. fight right now. Just exchanging just blows two. back and forth. Added to Caius on the outside. Cleaver for three again. Why not? He is absolutely feeling it. And Griffin Cleaver has 16 here in the first half. Wow. Coming into the game, averaging 13 points, has 16 already. I know Coach Donegal's pretty happy about that. Out of Takasi going the distance. We've got a whistle before the shot and an offensive foul. They'll call it on Nolan Mater for clearing out, and you'll get another look here on the pilot replay. Actually, they did call it on Adetokasi. Originally, they signaled 25 and came back and signaled 15. <laughs> but again, one of the gambles Steve Dre been taking right here. He's got his point guard, Drew Lutz, in the game with two fouls for the last four minutes of the first half. Hunt was open and decided not to take the three. Instead, goes inside with a bucket of the ball. Brandon Hunt. Brandon Hunt showing some physicality here, as you see on the pilot replay as he spun around Seth Maxwell. So the reason why Bethel's forwards are getting the ball at the top of the key, Indiana Wesleyan is forcing the basketball down to the baseline on pick and roll situations, which opens up the throwback opportunity to the forwards, and that causes the defending forward a long run to close out, and you saw exactly what happened. He drove the close out, got to the rim, Fantastic play. Hunt now with nine. So the big fellas in the Bethel lineup, Ayers and Hunts, doing a pretty decent job today. <laughs> nine points apiece. Still a seven-point Wildcat lead. Ooh, Cleaver nearly chucked one up from the logo. Instead, they go down low to Maxwell. Good double by Trent Edwards. But we've got a foul called against the Pilots. They'll put it on Hunt. That's his second. Yeah, one of the easier catches here for Maxwell. It still wasn't uh, the most cleanest catch because he's just got bodies surrounding him every time that ball's coming to him. Hunt is a, or excuse me, Maxwell at the line, and he is a 69% foul shooter. They've done a pretty good job on the big fella today. He only has three points so far. Last time these two teams played down at Marion, he just absolutely dominated the game in the first half, and it wasn't close. The biggest thing for defending a player like him is to do your work early. When he's coming down the floor, you want to meet him at the three-point line, if not the free-throw line, and just put a body on him and knock him off his spots. Well, three-man weave action up top for Bethel. Lutz. Now they've got Hunt in the corner for three. Three! 
He has 12. That's his third three of the day. He's four for the Pilots are doing it all, Chuck, on the offensive end and the defensive end. They truly have been a highlight for the Bethel squad. Maxwell, let's see if he starts to try to get on track. Fadeaway is home. The big fella now with six, and what's impressive about him, at least to me, is the touch around the basket. I was just going to say, that was a great touch right there, but, but fantastic patience. He caught the ball, surveyed the land, identified if anybody was coming this time. They did it. He had a clean look at the hoop, his cleanest look of the night. Meanwhile, there's Hunt going down low, but Petrolis couldn't hang on to it. It went off the foot of an Iowa player, and Bethel will have nine on the shot clock as Sanders checks back in. Yeah, you, you wonder if this is a great time in the game to maybe get Lutz out of the game before he picks up a third here in the first half. I don't know if you can afford that, though. You're down eight already. The head and shoulders fake. Kick outside. Ertz couldn't hit it. Oh, wild try by Hunt. He just couldn't control the rebound. He goes out of bounds. Steve Draben clapping his hands in front of the pilot bench, trying to encourage his team with 2.10 left to go first half. Abitakasi over to Cleaver. He remains hot, but couldn't hit that one. But another offensive rebound for the Wildcats. That has been a problem for the pilots here in the first half. Sanders couldn't hit that one, and the rebound comes to Bethel. Lutz in transition. His ability to get through traffic is yeah. rather amazing. Yeah, his, his skill with the basketball, he's got that thing on a string, especially in tight quarters. Tuze with the floater and yeah. a charge called on Tongi Tuze. You'll see it again on the pilot replay. And there wasn't much doubt about this one. Yeah, he was just sitting there waiting on him. You know, as, as a coach, you, you tell all your players, you've got a role. I need you to be a star in your role. And right there, and a, a great example of Sanders stepping up and taking a charge for his team. I was just thinking, he has not played a lot of minutes today, but the minutes he's given Greg Donegal have been high-quality minutes. And I think Coach Draymond's okay with it because it allows Lutz a little bit of, of, of an easier defensive assignment on this end of the floor. Meanwhile, shot clock at seven. Oh, 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 and a blocking oh. foul called on Lutz, and that's his third. I retract exactly what I just said, Billy Chuck. And it'll send Kyle Sanders to the line for the first time all season. But now Trent Edwards has to come in, and Drew Lutz has to play a much different game. That is, in his mind, the second questionable call that's been tagged to Lutz today. But going back to our point here on Sanders, he's had an impactful uh, time on the court. Took the charge, and then he drove Lutz, knowing that Lutz has two fouls, and put him, might, might be one of the biggest plays here in the first half, Chuck. Four points for the young man out of Western High School in Kokomo, Indiana. He came in averaging only one a game. <laughs> but it's a 10-point lead for the Wildcats as we hit the final minute of the first half. Edwards finds Tuze. Tuze, great pass down low. Ertz handles the ball, and Maxwell swats it out of there. Indiana Wesleyan comes the other way. Oh, Cleaver was in rhythm, but so Smith. And a big fist pump from Greg Donegal on the Iwu bench. Smith with 14 in the first half. Cleaver with 16. It's still a guards game in the backcourt doing the job for the Caps. Yeah, and again, it started with the block shot, created mismatches in transition. That ball was popping for the Wildcats. Remember, just a moment ago, Bethel was down seven with the ball and a chance to cut it to five or four. Now they're down by 13, getting ready for the final shot of the half. And it's an air ball from Tuze, and Indiana Wesleyan still has two seconds left. Yeah, it's, it's been the Wildcat defense here that has stepped up down the stretch, created opportunities for them on the offensive end. 
And they're going to have to check the clock to see what the shot clock should have been at. And we'll see if we can track that down as well as to what the clock was at when the possession started. Yeah, curious to see if Coach Tonegal takes one of his uh, five timeouts that are left and draws something up here to get a good look. Now in this situation, three seconds on the clock, you can do two things and then you can shoot it. Two dribbles, Nothing. two passes, one, There's two. two. Well, and it goes out of bounds <laughs> and Bethel will have it with 1.6. Now here as a coach, you're telling your players, you've got one dribble and you got to get it up, or you have one pass and then it's got to get up in the air. Deacon Heath checks in quickly for Bethel. Nathan Ertz trying to set his personnel and they'll have Maxwell, the big seven <laughs> footer guard the one inbound. In. Here's Tuesday, it's blocked by Cleaver and the first half comes to an end. A tough final two minutes to the first half for the Bethel Pilots as Indiana Wesleyan was able to take control. Strong half by Brandon Hunt. He had 12 for the Pilots, but Griffin Cleaver with 16 leads all scores. Indiana Wesleyan on top, 49-36. We'll talk with Bethel AD Tony Natale at halftime on Bethel Pilot Basketball. We're at halftime of today's game at the Y Camp Center between Bethel and Indiana Wesleyan, and we're pleased to be joined by Tony Natale in his fourth year as the athletic director here with the Pilots, but has been here a long time as we were talking before the interview. Tony, I know in your tenure as AD, though, one of the focuses that you've had is to try to change the culture, or maybe not change, but improve the culture of the athletic department. What are the steps you've taken to do that? Well, we really have the right people on the bus right now, and we're excited about all of our sports, all of our coaches, uh, our, he our head coaches, our assistant coaches. They're doing a phenomenal job with our culture and just really putting the student athlete first. You know, we this this whole this whole institution is based on uh, being Christ-centered and making sure that our student athlete experience is top notch, and that's really what we're trying to focus on more than anything else. You've expanded that student athlete experience as well. You have a new program in men's volleyball, and they've already got a win under their belt in just their second game. Yeah, people don't realize we're not even supposed to be playing yet. We we, we hired Coach Eric Snyder as our head coach, and the plan was to give him a year to recruit and then start playing next fall. But uh, he did a phenomenal job over the summer, and we have a team. So uh, we went up last weekend, played up in Michigan and split. Lost a tough one last night to Mount Vernon, but we got Mount Vernon again tonight, so excited to see how they do. Meanwhile, of course, the sport most people focus on when it comes to Bethel, and, and with good reason over the years, is basketball, and I know you're excited about both the men's and women's coaches that you have right now. Yeah, the women's program's going the right direction with Coach uh, Scott Paulsgrove. He's done a great job of changing the culture there as well, and uh, those, those kids have worked extremely hard for him. Uh, done, done a great job just with the whole program. And Steve Draben and Mark Paulsgrove and the entire men's basketball staff have done a great job th with their program as well. Getting to the Elite Eight a couple years ago, we had a big win against Marion here the other night. And we're, we put ourselves in position with four games to go to make another run at the NEI National Championship. Now I know the old track coach in you is very excited because that season is underway and you're already seeing some outstanding performances from Bethel athletes. Yeah, absolutely. We have several kids that have qualified for NEI National already um, and then uh, a, a whole busload that have qualified for Christian Nationals which is next weekend so the team's doing great coach Danny Wilkerson's leading that up he's my assistant for many years and they haven't missed a beat they're still working hard and doing a great job and the new layman uh, track facility has really really helped that situation so uh, great facility to be training in and uh, they've done a great job yeah tell me about that facility because for years it was the halls of Goodman where you had to train this is a massive improvement. Yeah, the facility we used to train in now is our lobby, and we've changed that quite a bit as well. But uh, with the Layman Training Center, that's been a game changer on this entire campus, not just for the track programs, uh, but for all the other uh, sports. I mean, basketball can now get in and do individual work whenever they want to, volleyball, the same thing. And then it's been really good for our general student body because uh, they can come in and have, do intramurals as well, which we couldn't do before very well. So. And as a wrap-up, 
Let's talk about the spring sports coming up because on sunny days like this, it makes you think of the diamonds and baseball and softball will be here before we know it. Yeah, baseball actually opened up yesterday and they play again today. They're down in Tennessee and uh, softball just left. They open up with a couple games here uh, later today at Chicago indoors. So we're excited to get those uh, seasons started. Uh, they're both under great directions with Seth Artman and Allie Newell. So we're excited to see where they go this spring. It's always exciting to see you and to see the success that this campus is having right now. Well, I appreciate that, Chuck. You know, it's just been totally uh, a God-centered thing, and we're excited that we can continue to do the work we're doing. But again, Christ gets all the credit, and he stays right where he belongs in the center of this campus. That's Bethel University Athletic Director Tony Natale. We've got second half play-by-play -play coming your way from the Y Camp Center. After this, you're watching Bethel Pilots basketball on TV 46. Halftime here at the White Camp Center. Indiana Wesleyan on top of Bethel 49 36 as they're honoring some of the former Bethel greats here at the intermission, including Mike Lightfoot, whom this court is named for. Chuck Freebie and Craig Heatherly with the court side. Pretty impressive performance by Indiana Wesleyan. You can understand why they're a top 10 team in NAIA. They just have a lot of weapons that are difficult for Bethel to defend today. You're exactly right. Coming to the game, Coach Tonical said he wants to play inside, inside, out. But those guards flipped it. They said, let's play from the uh, outside, <laughs> inside with with uh, fantastic play from Smith. And obviously, Cleaver just did a fantastic job of stretching the D, making threes and making plays for others. Well, let's show you how it got to be this way inside the Y Camp Center today. Noah Smith fired the first salvo of the game for Indiana Wesleyan hitting on the three. But Nathan Ayers with the dunk and the harm and then would go in for the scoop layup. But when Griffin Cleaver hits this step back three coming up, that's when you kind of got the feeling it might be Indiana Wesleyan's day when they're hitting shots like that. Not that Bethel didn't answer. Ayers came up with a three. Drew Lutz working inside. But Smith would find some room down the lane, just go with the blow by right there. Look at this move by Lutz. That was sweet. He had seven in the first half despite foul trouble. Found Al Petchel is here. That was a tie game right there. And then Cleaver started to really heat up from three. Tuesday had a layup for four, but Cleaver had 16 in the first half, and he got a lot of help. Brandon Hunt was the lead scorer for Bethel in the half with 12, but Noah Smith with 14. And Greg, when we look at the first half numbers, two things really stood out for me. The nine for 14 from three-point range for the Wildcats and the rebounding mark. You're exactly right. The rebounding margin stuck out the most to me, Chuck. Seven offensive rebounds for Indiana Wesleyan to Bethel's zero. And the second chance points, and Coach Draven's probably talking about this right now at halftime, 13 to zero. They are definitely outworking them when that ball goes on the rim. And 13 is the magic number right now because that's the lead for Indiana Wesleyan as they have a 49-36 lead. Also at halftime, Bethel saluted. It's NAIA Men's Soccer National Championship squad. What a job by Thago Pinto and his squad this year, winning in the snow and bringing back Bethel University's first NAIA National Championship in any sport since 1998 when Mike Lightfoot's team won at the Division II level. What a job by the pilot soccer team, so a tip of the cap to them. 49-36, Indiana Wesleyan on top of Bethel. Concession sales have been booming with Coach Heatherly in the house. Lots of popcorn and Mountain Dew being sold over there. We'll see if it's enough to rejuvenate this crowd and the pilots when we come back on 46. Right before the second half begins here at Bethel University, we want to remind you we've got Big Ten basketball on the radio on Pulse FM this week. Tuesday night at the Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Rutgers, which has had a very solid Big Ten season, comes on in to take on Mike Woodson's club. That's at 6.30. And then on Thursday night at Mackey Arena, that place will be rocking again as the Iowa Hawkeyes come for a visit to take on Zach Eady and the Boilermakers. That's at 7 p.m. Your home for Big Ten basketball on the radio in Michigan is Pulse FM. Taking a look at Steve Draven in his fourth season here at Bethel. He's 74 and 48. 
And the Laporte alum's got to find a way to climb the hill today. His team down by 13 as we get ready to start the second half. What kind of adjustments do you expect from Steve? I think it's 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 simple. It's how do we limit eliminate the easy baskets for Indiana Wesleyan. And that starts with free throws. It's layups. But most importantly, it's catch and shoot threes. It's one of the easier shots in the perimeter to make. You got to force those guys off the three point line and start to make them play, force them to make plays at the rim. Maybe it's an oversimplification, but at a certain point you realize, well, two is less than three. Maybe <laughs> I want to protect that perimeter a little bit more. It might free up the inside. At the other end, you got to convert opportunities like that, which Lutz was not able to do. At the start of the second half, Buchanan roars the other way, but misses another offensive rebound, though, for Indiana Wesley. And their dominance on the boards continues. Yeah, it's now eight for the game for the Wildcats. Extra possessions are things you need to eliminate in a game like today. Smith well defended that time by Deacon Heath, and Heath was able to get the rebound as well. Lutz comes the other way for Bethel. Lutz guarded by Mater, and Lutz liked that matchup. Oh, the high arcing bank shot. <laughs> Greg Tomigo will take forcing in them into that shot, though, all day. I thought for a second it was raining, Chuck. Holy cow. I think that thing touched the ceiling. Nine points now for Lutz. Buchanan banging bodies and a foul called underneath. And I might dare say that was a Greg Tomigo foul because he was <laughs> lobbying for that the last time down the court. <laughs> Yeah, back to that that emphasis to start the game for the Wildcats play inside inside out. How about that though from Watts to get it over Maxwell's Buchanan goes to the foul line for the second time this evening. He has four points now. He didn't play varsity until his senior year at Lafayette Jeff. Shows how deep the talent pool that Mark Barnheiser is working with. <laughs> 51-38. Tuze left it off for Hunt. Hunt needs help. Lutz, there's Hunt for three. A little short, but Heath, his second rebound of the half. Lutz can't convert either. It has been a chilly shooting start to the second half for Bethel. Meanwhile, Cleaver, he's not cold. Yeah. 19 for Griffin Cleaver, as we mentioned, coming off 31 on Wednesday night against Spring Arbor. And now Smith has it in transition. Cleaver will step up. That one won't go. Tuesday collects the ricochet. Finds Lutz for three. He's rushed that one a little bit. Lutz gets it back. Tuesday with all the time in the world, but can't hit. Yeah, one of the one of the most challenging things as a player to play with and play through is fouls. And I think you're seeing that impact right now with Lutz on the offensive end. He pulls up and rattles that one home. 11 for Drew Lutz. But like any good player, you forget about the last shot. That was your philosophy. <laughs> Fourteen point lead. Here's Cleaver again. And a push off foul called on Nolan Mater as he absolutely decked Lutz. You'll get another look here on the pilot replay. You don't want to give Cleaver a lot of looks like that, that but yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say there, Chuck. Was that side that side ball screen happened right there. If you're guard Cleaver, you've got to go over the top of that screen, force him to get his feet in the paint and make plays. Hunt guarded by Maxwell. Lutz for three. Yes, sir. 14 for Lutz. He can shoot you back in it in a hurry if he gets hot. Yeah, there's going to be there's going to be enough enough possessions here in this game with the pace. And he's going to have plenty of opportunities to get his rhythm back. Smith rattles that one out. Bethel with the chance to get it down to single digits. Hunt for three. Uh huh. His fourth of the day. Greg
McTonagall's not waiting for an immediate timeout. He's taking one right now. He'll take a 30. And you get another look from the pilot replay as to the back-to-back -back threes from Bethel. Lutz hit one, then Hunt. And all of a sudden, 14 for Lutz, 15 for Hunt, and the pilots are back within eight. Yeah, your offensive philosophy and transition is sprint, space, and share the basketball. And we've seen a prime example of that here from the pilots over the last couple of stretches up and down the floor. And, and here's an Indiana Wesleyan team that in the first half, 9 of 14 from three-point range. They've had the same looks here in the second half, and they've only been able to knock down one of them. You're exactly right. <laughs> and... Uh, and it, it's not like Bethel's picked up the pressure on the basketball. I haven't seen anything different from their first half pressure. Uh, it's just a, it's a make, or miss, make or miss game, Chuck. Right now, the Pilots have made enough to cut five off the halftime deficit. Smith down low to Maxwell. His nice pass underneath, but good defense by the Pilots, and it's out of bounds off the Wildcats. Yeah, anytime there's a dead ball and, the co and Coach Tonicles had an opportunity to drop a play, you can see there's been an emphasis of getting the ball inside. That's exactly what they try to do there after that timeout. Hunt comes around. They were looking to get it to Lutz. That was well defended. Hunt drawn Maxwell out away from the basket. Shot clock down to 10. Here's Tuesday. Got a screen, in trouble, forces it up, and it won't go. That was an excellent defensive set yeah. by Indiana Wesley. You're right, and, and again, that was a, a side pick and roll. It forced the ball handler to drive to the baseline and put himself in a tough position. He wanted to go to the middle of the floor. Meanwhile, at the other end, the three hit. This one by Spencer Piercefield. And I say that with shock because <laughs> he was injured and this is his first game back. And we've got a TV timeout with 15-17 to go in the first half. 57-46 in favor of Indiana Wesleyan. You're watching Bethel Pilots basketball on TV 46. Back inside the White Camp Center, 15-17 to go, an 11-point Indiana Wesleyan lead. Perhaps all the more impressive when you consider what Steve Draven's team has been doing here at the White Camp Center this year. Yeah, they, they've they've taken care of home court consistently over the season. You see it there with a 10-1 record at home, but they haven't had a team like this Wildcat squad who's playing the way that they are. Multiple guys that can shoot the three. Big players on the inside that can score it. Uh, they've got their hands full right now, Chuck. And while it's a little early to do scoreboard watching, I'm sure somebody on that Wesleyan staff is aware that Grace has a sizable lead on Taylor today. So they need this win to stay tied for the lead in a very competitive crossroads lead. Lutz, and he ran right into the shoulder of Griffin Cleaver. First, Interesting side story on Griffin Cleaver. As you might expect for somebody from Lee Summit, Missouri, he is a big Kansas City Chiefs fan. <laughs> well, he watched that AFC Championship game with Nolan Mater, who is a big Cincinnati Bengals fan. <laughs> you see the three missed by Petros, but put it back up and in by Nathan Ertz. My understanding is the trash talking was pretty high until the end of the game. <laughs> Oh, I bet it was. The three on the way from Tim out of the Kasi. He has eight. And if he's hitting shots like that, it can be a long day. Another baseline drive. We call it a baseline drive and drift when you kick it to the corner for the open shot. Here's Tuesday. And out of Takasi switches over to 
the defense of Piercefield that uh, and now we'll see Nolan Mater check in for Noah Smith. Bethel trying to get it back down to single digits again. Trailing by 12. Nice inbounds to Ayers who puts it up and in. All the eyes went to Lutz on the outside. Yeah, typically a base on an inbounds play like that, you're sending a shooter to the corner, and that's exactly what Bethel did. And when your defense shows out to provide help, it believes it's acceptable to go slip to the basket. That's exactly what happened. Out of Takasi, banging bodies with Ertz, and Ertz is called for the foul. You'll get another look here on the pilot replay. And you can see where Ertz has the arms up, but kind of karate chops right there and gets called for the foul. Yeah, we would always say, you know, the toughest shot in basketball is around the rim between you, the ball, and a body. Just build the wall, put your hands up, make them score over a body. It's one of the harder shots in basketball. That's why you see so many guys extra pivot down there to try and create some angles, and that's exactly what happened. Out of Takasi was playing hurt the first half of the season. He's now healthy, and it's starting to show in his offense. He has nine today. And defensively, I mean, he's out here on the floor picking up Lutz, forcing Lutz to play a little bit out of control, but there it is, down the lane. Is there any out of control for Drew Lutz? <laughs> no, you're right. He's got 16. And you'll get another look on the pilot replay. As he's savvy. Savily, I should say, gets by the defender and winds up with the three-point play the old-fashioned way. 17 now for Drew. And Bethel has the lead back down to eight. And now some full court pressure from the Pilots. Yeah, you feel a little bit of momentum after a play like that. How can they pick up the pace, make Indiana Wesley a little bit uncomfortable here with some trapping situations? Out of Takasi outside. Here's Mater. Now Cleaver. Shot clock down to 10. Piercefield lost the handle. Here come the Pilots. Lutz. Good transition defense by Indiana Wesleyan. Tuesday with the floater. Ooh, off the rim and the rebound of Maxwell. That would have been huge for yeah, Bethel. Coach Draven applauding his team. He loves the pace. He needs some big defensive effort here, though, and he gets a reach-in foul as the two Englanders <laughs> go head-to-head -head right there with Adetokasi guarded by Petulus. He's just he's a, such a difficult matchup defensively. He can, he's made multiple threes here. He's now driving the ball to the back, I mean, to the rim. It's, he's, he's a challenge. He's a nightmare defensively for coaches. Cleaver. Now to Maxwell. Smith around the screen all the way to the basket, and Maxwell with the cleanup effort. He has eight. Trent Edwards thought about the three. Instead, dishes to Lutz. Oh, pop-up jumper wouldn't go in the rebound of Maxwell. Smith will walk it up for the Wildcats, who definitely seem to want to change the pace from what it's been the last couple of minutes. Yeah, look to see Coach Tonegal get the ball inside here to Maxwell. Cleaver misses with the left hand. Tuesday races up, had a poke from behind by Cleaver, and Smith's pass is volleyball spiked by Nathan Ertz. Just warming up the court for later tonight. <laughs> for the pilot spikers. All oh, backdoor cut to Cleaver. That was well done. What, what an excellent call by Coach Tonical. He saw the defense pressuring on that previous play, forcing him to drive. He knew they were overplaying, went with the backdoor, wide open layup. Wesleyan gets the lead back up to 12. Tuesday, topside triple. Trevian. Yeah. And a timeout called by Bethel with 11.44 to go as the Pilots take it down and up. We'll take the timeout as well. 11.44 to go in regulation. 
Bethel chisels the lead down to nine on 46. Crossroads League action tonight on TV 46 with Indiana Wesleyan leading Bethel 65-56. And we counted early in the game how Drew Watts of Bethel, candidate for Crossroads League Player of the Year. Here's one of the reasons why, what he's able to do win the scoring column where he's only second to Jason Hubbard from Taylor who we saw earlier this year. Yeah, what's special about Lutz is he leads them in a lot of statistical categories, but he is the leader of this team on and off the court by the habits that he has in his life. And it's no surprise why he's having the success that he's having here at Bethel. You hear from the other players the influence that he has on them, just the way he leads his daily life and the way he is able to offer support to them in a myriad of ways, whether it's with an assist, whether it's off the court with advice. Just a tremendous, tremendous family, let's face it. And yeah. the credit for that goes to Peggy. None to spend. No, yeah, I was going to say that. I'm happy you said that there, Chuck. But before you can lead others, you've got to be able to lead yourself. And that's such, that's such a thing that people forget about. And he handles his business. He takes care of things on and off the floor. And uh, again, no, no surprise why he's having the impact that he's having here on the pilot team. Smith on the left side for Indiana Wesleyan. Nader bumped by Lutz, and that's his fourth. And you're guarding Nolan Mader outside the three-point area where he has not scored all day. Just an unnecessary foul there. Yeah. Um, it's, coaches are probably talking about it right now. Scouting report, scouting report, scouting report. You've got to lock into the small details of the game, especially during your position like Drew Lutz is in here with the foul trouble. Uh, honestly, there's two guys. That's one of the guys you have to guard from three. And the uh, rebound underneath by Mater lost out of bounds. It'll stay with Indiana Wesley. But Cleaver and Smith are basically the two guys you have to worry about from three-point range for Indiana Wesley. Especially with today's performance, absolutely. Buchanan will check back in for the Wildcats, as will Spencer Piercefield, the six-foot senior out of Greenwood, Indiana, what Center Grove High School. Eighteen left on the shot clock. Plenty of time for the Cats here as they inbounded to stop for the young man out of Northridge High School where he played for Scott Radiker. Noah Smith on the drive. Over Deacon Heath for two. Yeah, really nice play there on the side of the floor. The big went to set the screen. He slipped out of it, forced the defense to change their stance, gave up an opportunity for the drive to the basket. Smith with 16. Tuze to Deacon Heath for three. That's short. Petulous couldn't control the rebound, but it went out of bounds off Pierce Field. Yeah, you saw Drew, with Drew Lutz out, out of the game there. Coach Drebin went to a, a half-court offensive set to try and get the shot that he wanted, not necessarily what was given to the team in their motion offense. Heath on the right side for the Pilots. Ertz finds Heath for three. That's the bottom of the Stauffer, I believe, was the one who came flying at him and made contact after the shot. And Heath will get the chance for the four-point play. Yeah, different look here offensively with Lutz out of the game. They're running a lot more, a uh, lot more screens away from the basketball. Whereas when Lutz is in the game, the ball's in his hands, and they're setting pick and rolls for him to create for himself and others. Now it's. Stopper for three, and the big fella who rarely did that at Northridge is hitting 54% beyond the arc for Indiana Wesleyan, and he reigns in a key one there. Puts the lead back to 11 for the Cats. It's Heath in the corner for three. Rebound, Petulous. 
He'll go up strong for two. It's exactly what you need. With Lutz out the game, you've got to get extra possessions on the offensive end. Get on the glass. Get your team extra shots. You can see the look of resignation on Greg Tonigal's face as that offensive rebound was collected by Bethel. And now the Pilots trying to run, but again, good transition defense by Indiana Wesleyan. Tuesday in the corner for three. Yes, sir. Time out, Indiana Wesleyan. Greg Tonigal wanted the timeout as soon as he saw the ball go into Tuesday's hands that wide open. The defense yeah, exactly. in chaos. That's exactly what it is, Chuck. Defense, great defense leads to great offense, and we've seen examples of that here in the last three possessions. And all of a sudden, the Pilots as close as they've been since the latter stages of the first half. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's amazing what can happen when your best player comes off the floor and just forces everybody to elevate their game. That was the point I was going to make, is all of this is happening yeah. with Lutz on the bench right now. I think sometimes teams, and we've seen it with other teams too, not just Bethel, you get guilty of star watching, stargazing. <laughs> They're just waiting for them to do something, and not everybody else gets in the flow. That's why, as a coach, your habits on a day-to-day -day basis in practice matter. Your offensive system matters because you just can't build it around one player because what if they're in foul trouble? What if they get hurt? You've got to have a system offensively where everybody plays well with one another. So now here's the magic question for you as a coach. Your team is on a run right now, so there's no rush to get through what's in this game. But at some point, you bring him back. You have an idea of when Steve Draven might try to do that. Honestly, I'm actually surprised he's not coming back in the game right now. When you have momentum like that, uh, yeah, they're playing extremely well. Their defense is outstanding the last few possessions. He's just such a difference maker that he can make plays for himself and others with the ball in his hand. Here's the double team in the backcourt against Cleaver. Some full court pressure from the Pilots as they try to ramp up the pace of this one. This is a Bethel team that averages 84 points a game, so they don't mind a fierce pace as Pierce Field misses, but the rebound tracked down by Cleaver. Yeah, I think Coach Draven's not liking all the separation that these shooters have coming off screens, getting clean looks. Buchanan stepped back. Couldn't get it to go. Hunt couldn't control the carom, though, and another yeah. offensive set for Indiana Wesleyan. And you give a good team like this three shots at the basket, normally you're going to pay a price. Yep. Maxwell makes them pay. Yeah, and, and, and they have all afternoon, Chuck. You've got to limit this Wildcat team to one shot. Good ball movement. Hunt open for three. He has 18. That's his fifth triple of the day. It's a five-point game at the White Camp Center. Pierce Field put it on the ground and Petulus with the foul. Trent Edwards will check back in, take the place of Petulus, who now has three fouls. Getting some coaching up from Mark Polsgrove on that Bethel bench. Pierce Field. Dumps it into the corner for Smith. Shot clock at 11. Smith on the drive. Got Hunt in the air. Couldn't shoot over him. Cleaver has to force it up and hit it. Wow. This kid is playing outstanding. 23 for Cleaver today after 31 on Wednesday nights. Might well be the Crossroads player of the week this week unless Bethel can come up with a big finish here. Buchanan lost the handle. Hunt called for the foul, his third. Really nice advance pass there right uh, in transition, kicking the ball ahead. One of the most challenging things to stop in transition is that kick ahead pass. And you saw it right here. 
And Hunt doing what he can to prevent the easy two sends Buchanan to the line. 71% free throw shooter on the year, and he hits that one. He's four or five in the strike today as Stoffer checks back in to take the place of Piercefield. Yeah, you look at this Wildcat team, and they're averaging almost 80 points a game. They're shooting 50% from the field, 37% from the three. Coach Tonegal's teams have always been extremely efficient on offense, and it's because he recruits players that can pass, dribble, shoot, defend, rebound, well-rounded players. He told me on the phone yesterday, we don't do anything great but we don't necessarily do anything poorly. And I think that speaks to the point you're making. They're just a well-rounded team, and they've shown that today. Surprisingly dominating from the outside. Yeah. Ertz to the corner for Edwards. His three is not good. And the rebound to Cleaver, who is fouled by Ertz. And that's the third on Nathan. Yeah, again, another pick and roll situation where the ball handler throws the ball back to the person who set the ball screen for an open three, just weren't able to knock it down right there. Cleaver, described by Coach Tonegal as the Swiss Army knife of this Indiana Wesleyan team. He is fearless, and he's shown that today. Couldn't get the free throw to go, and the rebound to Hunt. Yeah, you, you asked a little bit earlier, Chuck, when do you get Lutz in the game? I think it's a, right, a really good opportunity now to get him over to the scorer's table with Wesleyan up nine. Ertz to Edwards, but nobody wants to pull the trigger, and it's a Bethel turnover, and here comes Drew Lutz. Yeah. Whatever momentum there was before that timeout with about nine minutes left, faded away in those last two minutes. Yeah, when you play through Drew Lutz so much, everything revolves around him. You just wonder on a situation like that, is it sustainable, Chuck? You know, you, I think you just live for the moment, and then you just get your, your main player back in the game, which he just did. Cleaver gets bumped by Ertz, and the foul called, and Cleaver gets up, limping like Fred Sanford as he goes to the foul line. <laughs> Credit Google it, kids. <laughs> and credit to him. He's, he's made threes, multiple threes, loads of threes here this afternoon. But it's the last few times he's had the basketball. He's drove it to the rim, and he's got himself to the free throw line. His 17th game of the season in double figures. Cleaver with 24 today, and we'll see Philip Sagota check back into the lineup, or not back in, in for the first time today. A 6'7 senior out of... Belgrade, Serbia comes in along with Deacon Heath. Lever, a sophomore, came in averaging 13 a game. What a week he's had with 60 or 56 points so far on the week. The Wesleyan lead back up to 11. Tuesday is fouled. That time by Cleaver. Only the second on Cleaver. Double, double! Tuesday to inbound. Here's Lutz. Can he take this game over in the last 617? Maxwell's not going to let it happen. Yeah, their, their ball screen defense has been outstanding. They just forced Lutz to his right hand again, not allowing him to get to the middle of the floor. And he's now taking a jump shot going to his right hand as a left-handed player. It's a little bit more difficult. Keith. Now Tuesday. Here comes Lutz. Well defended by Smith. Here's Sagoda backing down against Maxwell with the hook. Big Phillips Sagoda. Had only been averaging less than a point a game, but he gets a key two there for Bethel. Maxwell with the screen for Smith. Now it's Maxwell working over against to go to Smith for three. You ring it up. Noah Smith with 19 today. I think what happened there defensively, they got caught in, in, in no man's land. Tuesday can't get it to go in the rebound to Cleaver. You either go and double the post or you stay connected to shooters. And Cleaver draws contact from Deacon Heath, and he'll go back to the line. Hey, 
knew coming in the size was a concern for Bethel. But it's not just the size in the front court. The size of the back court, the strength of Smith, the range of Cleaver has presented problems for Bethel all day. And everybody in the rotation uh, has got size um, to, the, to them as well. So positionally, I mean, they're rotating guys in at the same at the same size. Uh, within the, and that's hard. It's just hard to do. You just don't have that luxury typically in college basketball at this level to do so. Yeah, the job guys like Adi Takasi have done coming off the bench defending Lutz today. Yeah. Key minutes from Sanders in that first half. Yeah. And the, the, the biggest impact on the game with the size is the defensive rebounding by the Wildcat team. Suze serpentines through, regains the handle, and Hunt is open for three. But it's short, and the shots that were falling for Bethel yeah. moments ago are not falling right now. Yeah. And a timeout called by Indiana Wesleyan with 4.46 to go. We'll take it as well. The Wildcats appear to be in control of this one. 83-69 Wesleyan on 46. Welcome back inside the White Camp Center. 83-69 Indiana Wesleyan in front of Bethel this afternoon. And the name most associated with Bethel basketball. Now, he himself would tell you that name should be Homer Drew, but it's Mike Lightfoot there in the crowd today. And of course, when you look around this arena at the banners that are up there, they don't necessarily have Mike Lightfoot's name there, but he's the man that put them there. Yeah, and I think if you were to talk to Coach Lightfoot, yes, he's, he's proud of the championships that they've won as teams, but he's more proud of the championship people that he's got in his life. Former players, former coaches. He's a guy that just continues to give back to the coaching community uh, across the region, across the country. It's no surprise why he's got so many former players pouring into the lives of young people at the high school level of coaches across the state. Well, when you talk about the people he's got around him, I thought you were talking about his wife, Jackie. <laughs> Who he would tell you is integral. Oh, by the way, Griffin Cleaver's still hot. He has to. He has not cooled off. At some point, the young man will develop a conscience, but that's coming from his coach, too, the way he played. Here's Ertz underneath with the bucket and the bubble. And he'll go to the foul line, but my goodness. Griffin Cleaver is just firing them in from all over the place here in Mishawaka. Are you sure yeah. Coach Tonegal wanted to play inside out? I like the outside in game here tonight. <laughs> Coach Tonegal was able to hear that comment, says it's exactly how he drew it up today. 14 point lead for the Wildcats. Cleaver finds Smith across the timeline. Outside, out of Takasi, lost the handle, but Wildcats with plenty of time to reset for the shot. No, no, no. And they can take their time with four minutes left, but Cleaver says, why bother? I'll just go down the lane. And the ball knocked out of bounds by Tuesday. Again, it just shows the skill set of this Wildcat team. Just makes a three. Now he just drives to the basket. It's, it's, it's just a tough matchup defensively. And guess who's shooting again? Short. Hey, I don't blame him for the heat check. Why not? <laughs> Lutz all the way. Nothing called down there, and out of Takasi comes the other way. Another defensive rebound with bodies flying around the Wildcats, securing the glass, limiting the Pilots to one shot. Here's Smith driving into the lane. The 10-footer won't go. And here comes Petulus and the Pilots with the rebound. Ertz was fouled on the way up, and he'll go to the line for two, and that is not what Greg Donegal was looking for from Indiana Wesleyan. He doesn't want the clock stopping and giving Bethel a chance to score. Nathan Ertz has had a pretty good week. He had 18 on Wednesday in the win over Marion. He's had 16 so far today. 
Young man out of Valparaiso High School. He played for the former pilot, Barrett Kuhlman. Brandon Hunt checking back in to take the place of Trent Edwards. Ertz really has been maybe the most solid player on this Bethel team outside of Lux the last nine games. And it has shown today with that 17-point effort. Yeah, yeah. He's had some really, really strong flashes, but he's just so consistent. He does his job and does it well. Um, scores it in, in a variety of ways. Would love to maybe see him get on the offensive glass a little bit more with this size, his athletic ability, but uh, has consistently impacted this team during the course of the year. So you see Petrolis check out. He's had six points and a few rebounds today. Lutz behind the back to Ertz. And his cross-court pass is stolen by Ada Takasi. Again, another pick and roll where they forced Drew to get the ball out of his hands and made the big make a play, and he ended up turning it over. Strong ball screen coverage for the Wildcats. Meanwhile, Spencer Piercefield on the dribble. Lobs it across to Ada Takasi. Ada Takasi over the smaller Lutz for two. 11 for the 6'6 junior off the bench. Lutz finds the cutting air. It's Tuesday for three. Rims out. And Lutz is fouled by Noah Smith. As the Wesleyan bench calls for a flop. Don't know if we'll get another look on the pilot replay, but I believe we will. And maybe you can make the call at home. Yeah, I thought I thought that guy he got a little push right there. Obviously, you see the extension of the hand. Pretty good stiff arm there by Noah Smith. So here's Lutz, who is a 90% foul shooter. The true test of the announcer jinx, and he passes. <laughs> Averages 22 a game. He has 18 today. Of course, a young man out of Penn High School who originally went to Incarnate Word, played for Carson Cunningham, the former Purdue standout there. One thing we haven't pointed out about Drew today, his assist to turnover ratio. Four to one assist to turnover ratio. And if you look at the Crossroads League stats, his 146 assists not only far and away yeah. lead this conference, yeah. but ranks fifth in the NAIA. I mean, you played, you coached, four to one assist to turnover ratio is almost off the charts. Oh, it's outstanding. I mean, as, as for your lead guard, I mean, you're looking for two and a half to one ratio for Drew Lutz to be four to one. I mean, think about that as, as a coach. You've got a player that can score 20 plus a game, make plays for others. He competes, he plays hard. Well, let's look at some of the things that he has done today. What has impressed you about his game besides the versatility and the ability to create off the dribble? He's also an excellent stand-up shooter. Yeah, he's he's got tons of confidence. He plays with pace. He pushes the ball up and down the floor to create some advantages for their team. I think those are the things uh, that stand out. Obviously, he's an outstanding shooter. He can finish at the rim, but I think his his ability to impact the game, the ball in his hands, not necessarily, not necessarily scoring, but just making plays for others and pushing the pace, that's what really stands out to me. I know in the first half he had three assists, no turnovers. I'll be curious what the final game stats are. He only needed one assist here in the second half to get to 150 for the year. That's impressive. 88-75, Indiana Wesleyan on top here in the second half. Smith gets it to Piercefield, and Piercefield takes it over to the far side. Shot clock down to 10. Maxwell lost it out of bounds. Knocked away by Bethel. The Wildcats retain possession. Bethel will need a three-point shooting barrage if they're going to pull off this miracle. Maxwell will go over Brandon Hunt, but the sky hook won't go. Lutz finds Tuesday. Outstanding transition defense there by the Wildcats. Tuesday shed Cleaver and hit the shot. 
Steve Draven going to hang on to that timeout for right now. Tuesday with 13. Cleaver handles it up top. And of course, Indiana Wesleyan trying to milk some clock here. Cleaver with the bucket and the bump for one more dagger yeah. to a pilot. My goodness, it's a career high for Griffin Cleaver today with 32. Yeah, when the pressure goes up, especially in a game like this, when Bethel's trapping, your most ingrained behaviors come out, your habits come out, and Wesley, and they just take care of the basketball. Multiple players that make really good and solid decisions. The Swiss Army knife has made some deep cuts in the pilots today. Here's a three on the way from Heath that's good. <laughs> Greg Tonigal wheels to the bench and says, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, when you're defending a shooter in the corner as they were, and a ball handler comes at you. You can't do a two-way run. And what I mean by that, Chuck, you can't run towards the basketball to provide help and then sprint back to your man. It's just too far of distance to cover. Well, let's show people what you're talking about right there with this pilot replay. And you saw Tuesday shed Cleaver. So that was the previous three-pointer. Exactly. Little step back three by the young man from France. But the last play with Heath getting open for three was where they really spread the floor well. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's in, in transition. You tell your offensive players to sprint to the corners to spread the defense and create space for your ball handlers to create for themselves and others. So 10 point deficit here. If you're Steve Draven, you're already in the double bonus foul wise but you're going to have to probably start fouling and try to extend the game as much as possible. Yeah, once that once that timeout happens, you're looking to your assistant coaches immediately and saying, who do we foul? Who's in the game? Who do we try and go after? Um, I don't know if there's many people out here on this Wesleyan team. <laughs> no, there aren't, but Maxwell <laughs> will finish with the 40. He has 12. And maybe not as... Biggest scoring day, but he's been an impressive presence down below and on the boards. And a foul called here on Tuesday. We'll send Adetokasi to the line. And for Tuesday, that's his third. Yeah, really good uh, press break there offensively for the wild catch. Pitch the ball ahead. And when you've got the big fella around the rim hanging out, he's a great outlet for you if you ever get in trouble. So here's Ada Takasi, who scored 13 against Spring Arbor Wednesday night and has 11 today. So the one good thing about Greg Tonigal's offense right now is he is getting contributions from guys that weren't necessarily regular contributors for the bulk of the season. Yeah, basically coming in the game, he had five guys in double figures. That's just so hard to game plan against defensively. You know, what do you take? What can you take away? Uh, and then I, I think it's been their, their versatility that's been the most impressive piece here. Lutz with the flying out of control layup, couldn't get it to go. Rebound battle, held ball. Alternating possession goes to Indiana Wesley. For example, the reason we identified Maxwell and Buchanan as the key players at the beginning of the broadcast, well, they're the two leading scorers. Maxwell, 15 and a half. Buchanan, 13. Those two have only combined for 19 points today. It's been Cleaver and Smith who have done the damage to the Pilots today. Yeah, like I said in the opening for the Pilot team, you want to be the best version of yourself. That's probably what Coach Tanaka was saying to his squad uh, there before the game as well. Just bring your best effort, lose yourself in the game, and typically good things will happen for you. So here's Ada Takasi going back to the foul line, young man that's extremely driven. Came over to the United States from Essex, London, England. Played out in California in his high school ball. Said it took a while to adapt. The speed of the American game much quicker than the European game. Yeah, when I was at the University of North Dakota, we actually watched him, recruited him a few different times, saw him play, and really liked him. I think he got several Division I looks um, and, and obviously has landed in a fantastic program for a fantastic coach. Here's Tuesday for three. 
That's off the mark. Tipped in by Hunt, who has had a nice day with 20. Yeah, you just want to see more and more of that from these athletic forwards for the Pilots. Cleaver will try to get it over to Smith, and at this point, you can just dribble it out. The Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats will hold on to first place in the Crossroads League and go to 18 and 7 in the air as Greg Tonegal's team tops Steve Draven, the two Laporte alums hugging at midcourt. As Indiana Wesleyan wins a bike out of 96 to 83, we're back to wrap it up from the White Camp Center after this on TV 46. Back at the White Camp Center, a 96-83 victory for Indiana Wesleyan puts them atop the Crossroads League at 12 and 3, tied with Grace. Pilots fall to 8 and 7 in league play. Chuck and Craig courtside with you. Impressive performance by Greg Tonegal's team. And I'll say this, when they fill out the Crossroads League Player of the Week ballot, if Griffin Cleaver doesn't win, that's a fixed election because he had 36 <laughs> today in new career high. Yeah, from the from the very beginning of the game, he came out as a sniper, knocking down the three-point line. In the second half, he drove it to the basket a little bit more, got to the free throw line, but consistently was producing for the Wildcat team. For Steve Draben's squad, perhaps some lessons to learn from this one. The, the biggest thing is they have to figure out how to handle perimeter defense when there is a post presence down low because obviously their concentration was on Seth Maxwell after the way the first game went at Marion. They defended Maxwell well, but that left some things open. Yeah, it's, it's Indiana Wesleyan's versatility mm -hmm. that was the challenge for the Pilots this afternoon. They've got guys that can dribble, shoot, and pass, defend, rebound. It's the versatility that it's, it's, it's a challenge as a coach. What do you take away? Sure. They try to take away the inside and then obviously the lead guards scored a combined, I mean, 57 of 96 points between Smith and Cleaver. It's It was incredible. For Bethel, Drew Lutz with 19, Nathan Ertz with 19, Brandon Hunt with 18. Pretty good balance up top, not enough bench support, and the rebounding battle today completely dominated by Indiana Wesleyan as they took it 39 to 30. Yeah, and that was evident there in the first half. Uh, second chance opportunities for the Wildcat. They had seven offensive rebounds to, pilot, uh, to the pilot zero, which led to 13 points there at the break, and they just continued to control the glass down the stretch. Well, the Pilots will try to bounce back Wednesday night when they go on the road to Mount Vernon, and of course, you can follow the Pilots online at BU Pilots Athletics and at their website, BU Pilots, on Twitter. Special thanks to our TV 46 crew doing double duty this weekend, led by our production manager, Dean Korsmo. A reminder, Big Ten basketball on the radio. Tuesday night, it's Rutgers at Indiana at 6.30. Thursday night, Iowa and Purdue for Mackey Arena at 7. And then don't forget high school basketball on TV 46 Friday night. A top 10 showdown, number 6 Washington in 3A visits number 2 Penn in 4A. We'll have it on the live stream at 7.30 and on TV 46 Friday night at 11 and Saturday morning at 9. Now for Craig Heatherly, it's Chuck Freeby. Once again, the final, Indiana Wesleyan 96, Bethel 83. So long from the Princess City.